Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining our office hours today on this beautiful Wednesday in Palo Alto, California. We'll be kicking this off live in about four minutes, top of the hour. Until then, there'll be about four minutes of silence. Thank you for joining us today. It is top of the hour. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining us today for our weekly webinar office hours. It is a beautiful day here in Palo Alto, California, and our session is going to be hosted by our customer success engineer, Erica Gilbert. We encourage all questions. Please drop those questions in the comments section, and we will handle those during our live Q&A. A little housekeeping. Um, this is a live session. We are also recording it, and we will do a follow-up tomorrow with a recording in addition to an opportunity to chat with us because we'd love to learn about your use case. With that, take it away, Erica. Awesome. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, we have a relatively brief agenda today. Um, a lot of times in the landing lens, we focus on the features that are direct within the platform. So managing your data, labeling uh, data, 
assigning that out to different uh, users and SMEs to actually have the best performance and overall testing and, and model management. But there's a lot of other pieces involved when working with a computer vision application. So today we're going to uh, take take a look at the sort of flip side of the equation and focus on deployment. So you ultimately you trained a model, um, you feel comfortable that it's it's ready for uh, prime time in the wild. So what actually uh, is next? Uh, so we'll just at a high level cover um, options around the different deployment uh, capabilities available from uh, landing AI. Um, and then we'll do a live demo. Um, and we do also have some questions that were submitted via uh, the, the user form in advance. So we'll go through those and uh, answer them as best we can. And then any live Q&A that we have um, as well. But I'm grateful to be here, and I'm actually based in sort of cloudy, partly cloudy, uh, quite chilly uh, Boston, uh, Massachusetts. I'm just going to kill my camera so we can focus on uh, the content here. But thanks, everyone, for joining. So with uh, the Landing Lens platform, you have a variety of deployment options available to you. Um, and th our goal around this is really to make it um, as simple as possible to be able to port these complex deep learning models into your existing applications, um, whether that be uh, from a cloud perspective, um, at the edge in a seamless uh, UI application, or if you'd prefer uh, to work within a Docker uh, environment um, and, and run in uh, sort of NVIDIA Jetson uh, devices. But the goal is for you to be able to take that, that model and ultimately port it where uh, you need it. So we'll, you'll see this in the demo, but there's a couple different options. And this is common for uh, initial prototyping, just to be able to see and work with a camera right that's, that you carry around in your pocket uh, every day. So you'll see this in the demonstration, but there's an endpoint available for cloud um, that is mobile uh, inferencing. And then we also have the option for landing edge. Um, and this is specific to environments where you're working with an industrial manufacturing system that is connecting to uh, different cameras, uh, as well as potentially a PLC or other kind of um, uh, industrial uh, PC as well. So um, this is great because a very simplistic UI, which you'll see in the uh, demo as well, allows you to create an inspection point and you can have as many as your uh, computational system allows you uh, to run uh, sequentially and run, take those models that you've developed within Landing Edge or within Landing Lens and um, process to see the images and the inference results in a very uh, neat and clean UI. Um, and then if, if you choose, you can pass those results back to landing, landing lens to further iterate and improve um, on the models. There's also some customization that you can do within this setup, um, but there's a lot of, uh, if, you're, if you're thinking about your own end application, leveraging landing edge can be a very fast way uh, for you to get going. Um, in addition, cloud also is always going to be uh, very straightforward to get going, and you'll see that in the demo as well as I as I work with uh, the API. Um, a lot of times, if you if you don't already have a system set up, maybe Docker would probably be the sort of least preferred because it's the most um, complex to set up independently because um, there are typically a lot of other pieces to play. Um, but if you do have that already set up, then it, it's great because you're able to leverage uh, your existing uh, ML pipelines. We also provide a Python library, um, and this is great for those that are just sort of starting and setting up that overall ecosystem. Um, so you can see there um, it's available public on our landing AI GitHub, um, and it helps with a lot of the common uh, processes that you'd, you'd want to uh, be able to do within your application, 
So obviously you create a model and whether it's object detection, classification, uh, segmentation, or even OCR, you're passing an image and getting a, a, a JSON payload back from that model in, it, in the inference result itself. And based on that inference result, um, there's a lot of other steps that you might need to do in order to incorporate that payload into your downstream systems. Um, for example, if you think about on the pre-processing side, if you're working with video at all, um, you likely will want to grab, you know, one frame every, uh, you know, second or so, um, and then pass that ultimately to the model. Or if you're chaining models together, so for example, um, you know, you might actually be finding defects in an image uh, with an object detection or segmentation model, and then passing them to uh, a classifier there classifier to further refine. Um, or for example, if you need to count um, all of the examples in an image, um, you would need to take that JSON payload of all those results and apply some post-processing to actually do uh, that counting. So it's a great resource. And if you have uh, other examples that you'd like to see, please pass that back to the team. There's a great feedback button right within Landing Lens. Um, we're always looking for ways to help our customers uh, get to their end goal and end application uh, faster. So it's very common when, especially if you're, you know, this is one of your first or early vision applications you're, you're building, um, you should always think about this in the beginning before you begin your, your training and uh, you know, data labeling and overall management of your model, but thinking about how to ultimately deploy, the answer is always gonna be, it depends, because based on your own application requirements, it, it might be better to go with a cloud endpoint, um, or it might be better to go with an edge uh, endpoint. And so the, reasons why customers commonly choose cloud is because we're handling all of the infrastructure on the back end ourselves that uh, you you don't have to think about sort of the complex ecosystem whether it's uh, physical on uh, in, in your actual premise um, or in setting up a sort of vpc with uh, gpu machines um, and that can be quite variable and a lot to maintain and um, requiring, you know, full IT uh, ops team. So uh, cloud is commonly a good way to get going quickly. Um, and then edge, uh, it is great. And uh, we're seeing increasing adoption in edge, I would say, overall. Um, so we have two options there, and that is Docker, so deploying uh, through a container, um, or landing edge. Um, and the main reasons you would want to uh, leverage Docker are um, you, you already have an existing deployment infrastructure. And then therefore, as I mentioned earlier, it's very straightforward to add those inferencing capabilities to it. Um, and really, you're, you're focused on creating a programmatic way uh, to work with that infrastructure so that there is some deployment automation available. And then Landing Edge has a UI uh, built into it. So for those that are, uh, or maybe you're lacking uh, uh, technical de developer type personas on your team, Landing Edge would allow you to be able to deploy at the edge, um, potentially if you have requirements around not being able to pass data uh, to the cloud, um, you can be sort of completely air gapped in this situation. Um, with a UI to sort of uh, showcase results uh, from the model. And you can see there's a lot of um, considerations around latency and throughput um, that you would wanna look at for your ultimate applications. Um, so with cloud, that throughput is, is configurable. Um, with Docker, you know, depending on your setup, we commonly see it, it's, it's roughly running at, at 30 frames per second. Um, but we, of course, and there will be a um, opportunity to connect with us for your own consulting at the end of this, um, you can schedule a session to go through 
your specific requirements and we can make some recommendations on what might be ultimately the best uh, deployment approach. And I do highly recommend, we have great content on our website uh, with support.landing.ai uh, that also reviews these deployment options. And it goes a little more detailed into the different uh, benefits, um, you know, the plus minuses of, of ultimately your deployment uh, goals. But that at a high level covers how or where uh, I should ultimately deploy uh, my model. And so now we'll, we'll spend the most time today actually in the platform and go through uh, a demonstration. So we'll be working with a public available uh, data set today. It's for metal uh, casts. It's actually av available on Kaggle if you're familiar with that uh, community. Um, and you can see, I'll click in here on this uh, classification uh, project. So we're doing whole scene uh, analysis for these metal casts to identify either you know, good or ultimately uh, defective. You can see that it has good performance here, um, ultimately 100% based on all of its uh, testing and training data. Um, and you can see from a model management perspective, have a roughly equal distribution of, of defective, though it's seen uh, a bit more of what ultimately good uh, looks like. And you can see that the models learned on, on roughly 70% of data um, and done some iterating on, on roughly 20% and then been tested um, on 10%. So these metrics are, are pretty good and I feel comfortable about being able to, to put this model in the wild. And some of the great things about the platform that are helping um, you know, with your model management, you can see I have multiple iterations of this model. So the first one was, was trained on a little less uh, data and had slightly lower uh, performance metrics. So I added more uh, data and you know, ultimately that model improved. Um, you can always review those uh, snapshots and see how the model learned and trained. Um, and this is what's great for being able to iterate uh, quickly in the platform. So you can ac actually use this uh, data uh, to create a new project. Potentially, maybe you want to start um, outlining where the defects are. And so you create an object detection uh, project. But it's great to see this uh, complex capability built into point and click UI here. So that's some of the stuff that's already been complete, obviously, before uh, you, you promote your model to the, the real world uh, uh, stage. So you've obviously uh, loaded your data, you've labeled it, you've scrutinized its sort of performance after uh, running the, the training. And so now it's, it's ultimately time to deploy. And so as I said, with this demonstration, you'll see a variety of different deployment uh, approaches. So um, in this case, I want to make sure that I have my latest version of my model that I'm using to create because I was looking at a previous snapshot. Um, and I'm going to do a cloud uh, deployment because I want to take the benefit of not having to manage the infrastructure myself. And I'm going to hit uh, deploy. And I, it's always good to think about your naming convention conventions when you're working with uh, models. Um, I like to keep my model and project uh, or endpoint model and project names similar. Um, in this case, I'm just going to call this V1 and hit create. Um, and now you see I have a whole cast of uh, information here available to me now that my model is, is ready and I've, I'm on this uh, deploy part of the overall model operation management process. Um, you can see down here on the bottom, I'm able to leverage the Python library, the JavaScript library, as well as more traditional sort of web development management uh, curl commands, which is actually what I'll use today. Um, but I also have the option uh, to perform mobile inference. 
So what you'll see now, and hopefully this will pull up correctly with my phone. Just one second. So there you can see my nice water bottle. <laughs> um, now I can open this endpoint. And it's going to analyze the image and run that inference. And we can see here it's correctly identifying this as a defect. So importantly, these were images the model was not shown in its uh, training process. So I'm just going to take uh, one more here. And yep, that's correctly identifying. This is good. So this can be a great sanity check if you have data available um, that looks very similar to your uh, production application uh, on your phone or um, that is easily to, easy to replicate um, on the camera of your phone. Um, and so that's something to consider as well in your overall application development process is that sometimes uh, building a, a phone application um, can be one of the fastest ways um, to, because you, you, the camera um, and the application is all in, in one sort of uh, environment and ecosystem. So that's great. I've submitted those uh, images. Um, but what I want to do now is actually deploy it um, using the API as my inference. And this is what I'll do. I'll pull up Postman. So as many of you may be familiar with, with Postman. It's a sort of simple tool to sort of manage and create a, a light UI around API uh, infrastructures. I'm just going to drag that over here. Um, and I want to import. So I can just directly paste. And I'm going to go slow here because there's a lot happening. So I'm just going to hit copy. You see how easy that is from the platform. I was a developer 10 years ago on a XSL, XSLT uh, infrastructure. So obviously very different now. So I see my um, endpoint ID, um, the whole prediction endpoint is, is available um, as that single line uh, URL. And it has those values and sort of parsing out what would be a full HTML page with the appropriate uh, headers. In this case, though, um, we do need an API key uh, to make this work. So I'm going to come back to the platform and grab my API key. And then I'm just going to paste that value right in here. Um, and ultimately, in the body um, of this little mini HTML application, I want to select um, a file from my machine to process. So you can see I have some examples here that haven't been used in training. And I'm going to open it and then run the result. So when I was talking about deployment overall and uh, uh, speaking about a, a payload, this is that, that JSON payload that's available. Um, so we want to figure out ultimately in our downstream application how we're going to take um, this prediction response, which in this case um, is 99% confident that this is a defect, and pass it into our downstream systems. So do we want to consider um, anything about the confidence score and how we handle that decision in, decisioning in our own application? Um, and then, of course, there's additional information that could be very helpful for my overall data governance practices around looking at the, the model ID that it's ultimately associated with. Um, so that's very important as well. Um, but this is a very quick way to sort of have an end-to-end -end, uh, application using that API inference endpoint. But what if I actually want to deploy my model to the edge? So what I ultimately can do You can see I have um, those sample images 
available here. So if I wanted to add those back to the, the build section of, of my project, I could do that and see um, if it, in this case, I have 100% <laughs> performance. So it's, it's likely that I don't need to do that, but I could test, for example, if this was giving very low confidence, um, I might wanna incorporate that, that data performer retrain um, and then redeploy. So I can have many different endpoints here available. Um, but ultimately I would want to actually download uh, landing edge if I'm gonna deploy this within that UI. And there are options for Windows and for, for Linux available. Um, this is part of the enterprise customer uh, plan. So if, if you don't have that available, <clears throat> please reach out um, and we can see how you would be, be able to go and test uh, this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is actually open, because I already have it downloaded here to my machine, the landing edge application. This is sort of a retrofitted option to uh, be able to work within Mac OS. So you can see a very simple uh, UI, important here. Um, if you're ever running into issues, being able to download that diagnostics is great, but it's, it's point and click um, and I'm able to add an inspection point. If I can type. <laughs> and again, I like to keep all of the names consistent. Um, and in this case, for how I'm going to actually uh, grab my images, I have a lot, lot of different options. So I can use the web API uh, through a, a Swagger sort of light UI, um, or I can connect with JennyCam, or in this case, I can do a folder watcher. I, I would say I see this commonly, especially in customers who've already implemented other vision systems um, and <clears throat> are able to then watch, have that system output to a specific folder um, and, and grab the inference results uh, from there. So I'm going to select this as my folder. Probably would be a lot more complex, uh, potentially, if you're working with a virtual uh, machine. Um, and then I'm actually going to do the inspection start. So there's no uh, trigger sort of set up maybe if I had an industrial camera connected. Um, and then I want to actually uh, connect to the cloud so I can see my models. But I do also have the option, ultimately, if I wanted to directly uh, download this model, I could, and then import it uh, into Landing Edge. So that is also common that I see with customers especially when they're in environments where there's limited or no um, internet connectivity. But coming back to, to Landing Edge, I'm just gonna grab that API key one more time. We don't actually need the secret anymore. So it's an artifact of an earlier version of Landing Edge. So I just put something in there to be able to connect. And you can see it's now uh, connected to Landing uh, Lens, which is great because now I can select um, my project, which now you can see why naming conventions can be very important. A lot of people forget to name their project. So mine is metal cast defect identifier. And then I'm going to select my model from landing lens. And it gives me the options to select my two different uh, versions. And it's gonna actually load this model. Depending on your model size, it might take a little bit longer than what you're seeing now. Um, but with this classification model, it's, it's relatively small, um, has a small amount of data. And now ultimately that is available. If I was doing something more sophisticated, potentially with a, a PLC, I could leverage uh, this communication uh, section here. Um, but in, in that case, I'm not. 
or in this case, I'm not. Um, and I can decide if I wanna save my images in ping or JPEG, we commonly use uh, ping. Um, and then also where ultimately I want to uh, save them. And this is what I mentioned before about being able to load those results back to land landing lens. Um, this can be great, as I mentioned, for uh, sort of continual improvement um, over time. Um, and then there are options uh, for more custom processing. So a lot of customers do uh, leverage this both from an image processing perspective, um, and this is available in C uh, Sharp or uh, Python, and also from a results processing perspective. So for example, if, if you're running a, a, a manufacturing line um, and your defects are being identified a specific way, you may that may not reflect ultimately uh, what actually happens has to happen downstream. So it might be that those uh, classes of uh, different defect types equate to a different uh, uh, system, or you may be actually collating. So perhaps uh, one defect type is more severe, and so there's um, a different outcome uh, if you know maybe the product is fully kicked out. Um, or if it's not <clears throat> as bad, then perhaps it you just make sure you wanna save that data. So I'm gonna save the configuration and then I'm gonna run, hit run now. So we can see this is, is running. I have this option to stop running, but I have no images. So we're reminding that this is set up with a folder watcher. So now what I'm gonna do and I'm going to try to go really slow here because this happens quite fast. Is I'm going to take these roughly eight images and I'm just going to copy them here. But just imagine that these are coming from other some other vision system and, and ultimately being passed to this folder. And then I'm going to paste them here. And as you can see, the model is, is running through and giving me uh, ultimately the results. I see that some of them actually were, were incorrect um, in passing what was good versus uh, bad. So I can actually see that JSON payload and see if maybe the confidence score was low. In this case, it's not. So I definitely want to, to double check maybe what's happening with my own system. Um, or verify that, that something might need to be iterated in my overall uh, model uh, development here. Um, but you can see end to end that this is now an inspection system with results that is um, and could be completely disconnected from landing lens. So I'm gonna hit stop uh, running here. I'll go ahead and just delete this example. And I'm gonna close landing edge here. But you just saw sort of three different ways to look at deployment. One completely focused on the edge, um, and then two options for how you might leverage uh, the cloud uh, API. Um, and to further just point out, we do have a great Python library, so please uh, feel free to review that Python library and look at how you might uh, perform different inferences and even look at different examples that might help replicate uh, what you're trying to do, for example, if you're working with streaming video. And then your deployment options, uh, just sort of running through when when to use Docker, or when to, uh, how you're looking at um, connecting with different image sources and what works uh, with what can help you make decisions on how you're gonna take uh, the model you've developed within landing lens and promote it to the wild. So that's what I wanted to showcase from a platform um, perspective today. So now ultimately we will turn it over to the Q&A. So reminder, please uh, join 
uh, the chat. Um, and I will go through some of the questions that were submitted through the form on the registration page um, now. Excellent. Thank you for a great presentation, Erica. And let me kick off the questions from our audience. First is, um, what frameworks are best for deploying deep learning models? Great. Um, that's a, a wonderful question. Um, so obviously there's a lot of different frameworks available. One of the benefits of using Landing Lens is that we handle many of those aspects of the framework management, um, you know, like TensorFlow or PyTorch. Um, so you don't even need to think about that to have um, that direct interaction handled. But having knowledge of TensorFlow or PyTorch, as an example, can still benefit your overall uh, mo model development. Um, so it, that that's definitely something to take into consideration. Um, we have there's lots of classes and online courses that can help familiarize yourself with those. But for the most part, you, you don't really have to think about that, which is a great benefit. Excellent. And we have another question. Are all models private? As in, do the images we upload for training ever get fed into any global foundation model or foundational models? No. Um, so the models you use and train in the platform are yours and yours only. We do not use those models for uh, porting back to the foundation models that are available um, as part of the overall Landing Lens library. However, we do have customers that are exploring custom uh, uh, foundation models, um, and then we work with them explicitly uh, to make decisions around um, how they want that data handled if they ever want other customers to be able to use that foundation model um, or if they prefer that to be only available um, to themselves. Um, but just in general, the answer is no. Um, no one else is seeing that data and we're not using it uh, to, to improve our base models. Uh, we may have conversations with customers and do testing and benchmarking on some of those uh, data sets, but that's always with uh, sort of explicit uh, permission. Excellent. Great question, audience. Please keep those questions coming in our live chat. We really enjoy these questions. Next question. Can I download my model and use it in my existing applications environment? Yes, um, that's part of the reason I show the model download option. Um, this is important. It's not enabled by default. Um, so make sure you have a conversation with uh, your CSE or uh, landing uh, AI uh, connection uh, to have that enabled. Um, and you know, the, you're know you working typically with an Onyx file, so it should be easily portable uh, to your own uh, systems. Excellent. Next question. What are the challenges in deploying models to edge devices? Yeah, our goal is to try to address some of those challenges by providing tools like you saw, uh, like Landing Edge. Um, they're really uh, optimized to run the model as efficiently um, as possible with as limited computational resources as necessary. Um, and you know, we commonly see that that's one of the biggest uh, barriers to deploying to the edge because you know, maybe you're working with very large images with a segmentation uh, model, um, and that can be quite computationally intensive. And some of those uh, GPUs that you buy are, 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 um, are not uh, inexpensive. Um, so it can be a limitation, uh, but there's a lot of great advances coming. So that, that's why I mentioned, um, you know, we're seeing increased adoption um, at, at the edge because sometimes that's a way to manage your overall uh, cost. Um, so th that I would say is, is one of the biggest challenges and then having to maintain uh, that edge infrastructure because sometimes um, you know things become end of life or you might be working with a cloud provider that it is ultimately changing how they store or handle data 
um, and then you have to think about uh, how you're going to to work with that. Um, but hopefully, the the short answer is that working within our our existing edge uh, frameworks, you're you're able to avoid some of those concerns. Excellent. Uh, next question: How do you ensure the model performs well in real world conditions? Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, a lot of times I'll recommend for customers to uh, put their model, you know, early on uh, in development. So maybe it's not seen that much data yet um, into the existing application and run it in sort of a parallel or shadow mode uh, so that you can see what the performance is and find those edge cases and incorporate them into the model to improve it um, over time. Um, and that's you know one of the things that I showcased in the demonstration today was being able to bring that data back into landing lens, both from the mo the mobile inference perspective um, as well as the uh, landing edge uh, option to be able to pass that data back um, into your specific uh, project. So you know those are definitely things to consider. Um, in, in order to ensure the model uh, performs well. And then also thinking about your business process itself. A lot of times I hear lofty goals of trying to completely automate or replace uh, humans, but we always feel it's important to have the human in the loop. Um, and whether they're san sanity checking and the model is a second set of eyes or uh, you know, based on a certain level of confidence from the model, then the human is coming back into that review process. Um, but you know, those are some of the, the best practice uh, ways to actually ensure the model performs well in real world uh, conditions. Okay, next one. What image sizes are supported? The enterprise subscription says it offers large images, but not what this means in number of pixels. So the maximum uh, image size supported by the platform is 36 megapixels. Um, it may not be obvious within landing lens, but we do try to keep that information up to date um, on our support uh, uh, knowledge base. Um, but if you have, you have specific images that potentially are not working the way you expected in the platform, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll make sure um, that it's working appropriately. We do uh, cap uh, sort of the number of images that can be used in training. Um, so that's set at a limit of, of 10,000. Um, so also, also think about that if you have really high volume uh, projects. Great. And the next question, how do you handle data privacy and security in deployed models? Yes. So. Um, Number one, as, as mentioned and, and alluded to sort of in an earlier question, your data is your data. Um, so we're not using that data. Other customers are not seeing that data. But we have the security features built in with encryption and, and transit at rest to protect uh, if you're using the cloud endpoint. Um, and you know, once you're downloading your model uh, bundles, there's no way to sort of replicate uh, the images themselves that were used in that model. Uh, so there's a lot of comp uh, items built into the platform, including secure access controls um, that allow you to comply with industry standards and, and regulations. Excellent. We've got one more question. If anyone has additional questions, please drop those in the comment section. Uh, we'll be close to wrapping this up for the Q&A. And how do you scale model serving for high traffic? Definitely. So uh, especially if customers leveraging the platform from a cloud perspective, um, we are designed to scale with the needs of those enterprise uh, applications. So whether it's it's high volume or high traffic, uh, we handle that efficiently. Uh, but the scenarios will vary. So we'd love to hear a little bit more about what your specific footprint is. Um, you know, if you're actually looking at this uh, deploying to the edge and would like to use landing edge or whether you, you want to use Docker. Uh, so please be, please feel free 
uh, to go ahead and connect with us uh, in order to, you know, more fully address uh, those questions. And, and that's a great pointer to um, this URL here where you can connect with us to consult around your specific CV application. Excellent. Thank you, Erica, for a great presentation. To our audience, we really appreciate you joining us today and with those awesome questions. Again, a little housekeeping. We will be sending out the recording tomorrow with a follow-up email. We also invite you to take advantage of our no-cost consulting with a landing AI computer vision specialist. It's a session where we'll just really talk about your use case, um, your feasibility assessment, how we can help you find a, a really good solution, and then um, looking at budget, and then possibly next steps. So take advantage of that. Feel free to screenshot um, my calendar and we will definitely have um, the opportunity to chat with you. Make sure that you join our community. We are very active in that. In addition, um, sign up for our Landing Lens certification and um, all things computer vision, we are here to help you. Again, thank you for joining us today. Keep abreast of our webinar series. We welcome um, your attendance and all your questions. Have a great day.